हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू ए न्यू वीडियो ऑफ सुनंदास ट्यूटोरियल सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द चैप्टर नाइन ऑफ एन सी बायोलॉजी बुक व्हिच इज बायोटेक्नोलॉजी प्रिंसिपल्स एंड प्रोसेसेस सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल व्हाट इज बायोटेक्नोलॉजी इट डील्स विद द टेक्निक ऑफ यूजिंग लाइफ ऑर्गेनिजिम्स और एंजाइम्स फ्रॉम ऑर्गेनिजिम्स टू प्रोड्यूस प्रोडक्ट एंड प्रोसेसेस विच आर यूजफुल टू ह्यूमन्स इन दिस सेंस मेकिंग कॉर्ड ब्रेड और वाइन विच आर ऑल माइक्रोब मेडिएटेड दैट मीन्स इट इट इज प्रिपेर्ड बाय द हेल्प ऑफ माइक्रोब्स और दे आर एंजाइम्स कूड ऑल्सो वी थॉट एज ए फॉर्म ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी हाउ एवर इट इज यूज इन ए रेस्ट्रिक्टेड सेंस टूडे to refer to such of those processes which use genetically modified organism to achieve the same on a larger scale so now we are using genetically modified organism that means the organism with modified gene which helps us uh, or give us a give us products or our desirable products in large quantities further many other processes are also included under biotechnology for example in vitro fertilization leading to test tube baby synthesizing gene and using it developing a dna vaccine or correcting a defective gene are all the part of the biotechnology the european federation of biotechnology efb has given a definition of biotechnology so according to efb the correct definition of biotechnology is the integration of natural science or traditional science and organisms cells parts of the parts thereof and molecular analogs for products and services so according to efb it is the definition of biotechnology next principles of biotechnology among many principles there are two core technique that enabled birth of modern biotechnology one is genetic engineering second one is bio process engineering the technique to alter the chemistry of genetic material that is dna and rna to introduce those into the host organism and thus change the phenotype of the host organism so basically what we do in genetic engineering we alter the genetic material and introduce it to a new organism that is called host and change the phenotype of that host organism or we can produce our desired product in that in their body then what is bio process engineering then maintenance of sterile that means micro free microbial contamination free ambience in chemical engineering processes to enable growth of only desired microbe or eukaryotic cell in large quantities for manufacture of biotechnological products like antibiotic vaccine enzymes you probably appreciate the advantages of sexual reproduction over asexual one the former provides opportunity for variation and uh, formulation of unique combination of genetic setup some of which may be beneficial to the organism as well as population but asexual reproduction preserves the genetic information while sexual reproduction permits the variation traditional hybridization procedures used in plant and animal breeding very often lead to inclusion and multiplication of undesirable gene along with the desired gene the technique of genetic engineering which is one of the principle of biotechnology include creation of a recombinant dna use of gene cloning and gene transfer and this process overcome this limitation and allow us to isolate and introduce only one or a set of desirable genes without introducing on desirable genes into our target organism do you know the likely fate of a piece of dna which is somehow transferred to an alien organism most likely the piece of dna would not be able to multiply itself in the progeny cell of an organism but when it gets integrated into a genome of recipient 
it may multiply and inherited along with the host dna this is because the host the allele piece of dna has become a part of chromosome which has ability to replicate in a chromosome there is a specific dna sequence called origin of replication origin of replication or oocyte which is responsible for initiating the replication the replication process starts from that oocyte origin of replication therefore the multiplication of alliance alliance piece of dna in organism it needs to be part of chromosome which has a specific sequence called origin of replication so when we put a dna into the host body it should be integrated with the host body's dna or chromosome because after that integration it will multiply because that host body's dna contains the origin of replication so an allele dna is linked with the origin of replication so that the allele piece of dna can replicate and multiply so when we put a allele dna from outside to a host body we should add a origin of replication to it so that it can multiply when it enter inside that host body so uh, this can also be called as cloning or making multiple identical copies of any template dna so this process is called cloning let us focus on first instance of the construction of artificial recombinant dna molecule the construction of first recombinant dna emerged from the possibility of linking a gene encoding antibiotic resistance with the native plasmid plasmid is the autonomously replicating circular extra chromosomal dna and present in bacteria and this plasmid which was first uh, genetically modified extracted from salmonella typhi typhimurium stanley cohen and boyer accomplished this in 1972 by isolating the antibiotic resistant gene by cutting out a piece of dna from plasmid which was responsible for conferring antibiotic resistance the cutting of dna at uh, the cutting of dna at specific location become possible with discovery of so called molecular scissors called restriction enzymes restriction enzymes helps in the cutting of the uh, dna at specific location this restriction enzymes are of two types one is exonuclease another one is exonuclease when uh, this enzyme cleave the dna from side chain from side from a side or from a, from terminal position it is called exonuclease but when it cleave the dna from any point in between that means not in a terminal position any point in the middle of dna is called endonuclease the cut piece of dna then linked with the plasmid dna this plasmid dna act as vector suppose it is the plasmid we cut this plasmid then add our desired dna in that plasmid and this plasmid then act as a vector to transfer piece of dna attached to it you probably know that mosquito acts as vector to transfer malarial parasite into human body in the same way the plasmid can used as a vector to deliver an allele piece of dna into the host organism what is the allele piece of dna allele means new or introduced dna into the host organism the linking of antibiotic resistant gene with plasmid vector become possible with the enzyme dna ligase that means this piece of dna or foreign dna attach with this plasmid using the enzyme dna ligase dna ligase helps in the joining of this new dna with the plasmid which make it a new combination of circular autonomously replicating dna creating in vitro that means in lab and now this is known as the recombinant dna this newly formed dna is called 
recombinant DNA or RDNA. When this DNA is transferred, transferred into Escherichia coli, which is a bacterium closely related to Salmonella, it could replicate using new host DNA polymerase enzyme and make the multiple copies. The ability to multiply copies of antibiotic resistant gene in E. coli was called the cloning. Cloning of antibiotic resistant gene in E. coli. Suppose it is a plasmid, you, you insert here, you insert the antibiotic resistant gene and then insert it inside the body of a suitable host. Suppose it is a cell of E. coli. You insert this inside the body of E. coli. And this piece of DNA contains the antibiotic resistance gene. So after insertion, it will replicate inside the body of E. coli and produce multiple copy of antibiotic resistance gene inside the body of E. coli. This process is known as cloning. Then you can hence infer that there are three basic steps in genetically modified organism. One is identification of DNA with desirable gene, introduction of identified DNA into host, maintenance of introduced DNA in the host and transfer of DNA into its progeny. Then tools of recombinant DNA technology. At first the restriction enzyme. So this restriction endonuclease and exonuclease there are two types of restriction enzyme uh, this uh, restriction enzyme can uh, restriction exonuclease can cleave the dna uh, at terminal position but uh, restriction endonuclease can cleave the dna at any point in the middle it will it can cleave the dna from in middle not from the terminal position the first endonuclease, restriction endonuclease is hind 2 whose functioning depend on the specific DNA nucleotide sequence was isolated and characterized 5 years later. It was found that hind 2 always caught the DNA molecule at a particular point of recognizing a specific sequence of 6 base pair. This specific uh, base sequence is known as recognition sequence. This restriction endonuclease, any restriction endonuclease can cleave a specific base sequence. That sequence is called recognition sequence for that uh, restriction endonuclease. So for HIND2, uh, HIND2 there is a pair of 6 base pairs, a specific sequence of 6 base pairs. Besides HIN2, there uh, today we know more than 900 restriction enzymes that have been isolated from over 230 strains of bacteria, each of which recognize different recognition sequences. The convention for naming these enzymes is the first letter of the name comes from the genus and second to letter from the species of prokaryotic cell from which it is isolated. Suppose one restriction enzyme name is ECOR1. ECOR1, E means Escherichia coli, R, uh, sorry, E means Escherichia, CO means coli, then R, the letter R derived from the strain named. Strain name is R. Then Roman numbers following the names indicate the order in which enzymes were isolated from that strain of bacteria. Suppose from E. coli that uh, that is the first enzyme isolated from E. coli. So named as E. co R1. E comes from the Escherichia, then co from coli, then R is the strain name and 1 that is the first enzyme isolated from E. coli. Restriction en enzyme belong to larger class of enzyme nuclease. And these are two types, exonuclease and endonuclease. Exonuclease uh, remove nucleotide from the end or terminal position, whereas endonuclease may cut at a specific position within the DNA. Each restriction endonuclease function by inspecting the length of DNA sequence. Once it finds its specific recognition sequence, 
uh, it will bind to the DNA and cut the two strand of double helix at specific point in their sugar phosphate backbone. Each restriction endonuclease recognizes specific palindromic sequences in the DNA. What is palindromic sequences? Do you know what is palindromes? There are group of letters that form the same word when read forward and backward. Suppose Malayalam. For example, Malayalam. As against a uh, word palindrome, where same word is word is read in both the direction. The palindrome in DNA is a sequence of base pair that reads same on two strand. When orientation reading is kept the same. For example, following sequence read the same on both the strand from 5 days to 3 days, from 3 days to 5 days. Suppose from 5 days to 3 days it is G A A T T C and from 3 days to 5 days it is C T T A A G. Just the reverse of it. It is called the palindromic sequence. You can read. Uh, when you, you read from this side it is same when you read the opposite strand from the opposite side this is called as the palindromic sequence restriction enzyme caught the strand of dna little away from the center of palindromic side but between the same two bases on the opposite strand this cleave leaves single stranded portion at ends there are overhanging stretches called sticky end on each strand. These are named so because they form hydrogen bonds with their complementary cord counterpart. This stickiness of ends facilitates the action of enzyme DNA ligase. The restriction endonuclease are used in genetic engineering to form recombinant DNA molecule which are composed of DNA from different sources. When caught by the same restriction enzyme, the resultant DNA fragments have the same kind of sticky end. These are joined together using DNA ligase. So here is the diagram representing the recombinant DNA technology. It is the foreign DNA added to a vector plasmid joined using the ligase then transformation that means introduction of this uh, R uh, DNA to a new host cell then it will multiply forming these multiple copies of this newly formed R DNA or recombinant DNA then uh, you may have realized nor that normally unless one cut of the vector and the source DNA with same restriction enzyme the recombinant molecule cannot be created then separation and isolation of DNA fragment the cutting of the cutting of DNA by restriction endonuclease results in the formation of fragments of DNA these fragments can be separated by a technique called gel electrophoresis DNA fragments are negatively charged molecule and they can be separated by forcing them to move towards the anode under electric field through a medium or matrix. Nowadays most commonly used matrix are agarose gel which is a new natural polymer extracted from seaweeds. The DNA fragments separate according to their size through sieving effect provided by agarose gel. The separated DNA fragments can be visualized only after staining with ethium bromide followed by UV radiation by the exposure to UV radiation. You can see bright orange color bands of DNA in a ethium bromide stained, stained gel exposure to UV light. The separated bands of DNA are cut out from agarose gel and extracted from gel piece. This step is known as the illusion where the fragments are separated from that agarose gel. The DNA fragments purified in this way and used in constructing recombinant DNA by joining them with cloning vectors. Then cloning vectors, you know that plasmid and bacteriophage have the ability to replicate within bacterial cell independent of control of chromosomal DNA. 
बैक्टेरियोफेज बिकॉज ऑफ हाई नंबर पर सेल दे हैव वेरी हाई कॉपी नंबर ऑफ देयर जीनोम विद इन बैक्टेरियल सेल सम प्लाज्मिड्स में ओनली वन एंड टू कॉपीज पर सेल वेर एज अदर में हैव फिफ्टीन टू हंड्रेड कॉपीज पर सेल सो देर आर सम फीचर्स दैट आर रिक्वायर्ड टू फैसिलिटेड क्लोनिंग इन टू ए वेक्टर सो दैट वेक्टर हैव ए शुड हैव ए ओरिजिन ऑफ रेप्लीकेशन फ्रॉम हुआर द रेप्लीकेशन ओरिजिन विल ओरिजिन देन सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपोर्टेंट टू नो व्हाट इज सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर इन एडिशन टू ओरि और ओरिजिन ऑफ रेप्लीकेशन वेक्टर रिक्वायर ए सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर हुईच हेल्प्स इन आइडेंटिफाइंग एंड एलिमिनेटिंग नॉन ट्रांसफॉर्मेंट ट्रांसफॉर्मेंट मीन्स द होस्ट बॉडी in which the host recombinant dna is inserted and non transformant inside those organism or host where the are recombinant dna dna are not introduced so these are non transformant transformation is the procedure through which a piece of dna introduced to host bacterium normally gene encoding resistant to antibiotic such as ampicillin chloramphenicol are considered useful for selectable marker for e coli normal e coli cell do not carry resistant against this antibiotic suppose it is a e coli cell they have plasmid and normal chromosome if they do not have this uh, antibiotic resistant gene suppose we insert a uh, foreign r dna or recombinant dna uh, with uh, a resistance gene of for antibiotics after their introduction inside that uh, e coli cell they so antibiotic resistance and from this we can conclude that this is a transformant then what is cloning site in order to link the alien dna or new dna or desired dna the vector need to have very few preferably single recognition site for commonly used restriction enzymes presence of more than recognition sites within the vector will generate several fragments which will complicate the gene cloning the ligation of alien dna is carried out at a restriction site present in one of the two antibiotic resistance gene for example if you can ligate a foreign dna at bam hi site of tetracycline resistant gene in vector pbr322 the recombinant plasmid will lose tetracycline resistant due to insertion of foreign dna suppose it is the dna which is present in a plasmid uh, pbr322 due to presence of this gene this plasmid when insert inside a host host body it will so uh, resistant towards the tetracycline antibiotic but when we cleave this gene and insert our desired gene this plasmid after insertion will not show any kind of uh, uh, that uh, any kind of uh, resistance towards the tetracycline so from that we can conclude that uh, the transformation of desired gene is successfully occurred so the transformant growing on uh, ampicillin containing medium are then transport to medium containing tetracycline the recombinant will, will grow ampicillin but non recombinant will grow on medium containing both antibiotic in this case antibiotic resistance gene will help in selecting the transformant whereas antibiotic resistant gene gets inactivated due to in insertion when we insert our desired gene at this position and cleave this tetracycline resistant gene so this uh, plasmid after insertion will not show the resistance towards tetracycline so this is known as the inactivation due to insertion inactivation of this resistance property by inserting a new gene this is called as insertional inactivation then vector cloning gene in a plant and animal you may surprise to know that we have learned the lesson of transferring gene 
uh, into plant and animal from bacteria and virus which have known this for ages how to deliver gene to transform eukaryotic cell and force them to do the bacteria and uh, what bacteria and virus want for example agrobacterium tumefaciens a pathogen for several dicot plant is able to deliver piece of dna known as tdna to transform normal plant cell into tumor direct this tumor cell to produce chemical required by the pathogen similarly retrovirus in animal can have the ability have the ability to transform normal cell into cancerous cell a better understanding of the art of delivering gene by pathogen in eukaryotic host has generated knowledge to transform this tool of pathogen into socks useful vector for delivering gene of interest to human the tumor inducing plasmid of agrobacterium tumefaciens has now been modified into a cloning vector which has no more pathogenic to plant but still able to use mechanism to deliver gene of our interest to variety of plant suppose it is the gene of that uh, ti plasmid suppose it is a ti plasmid when it enters into the host body or plant body it creates the uh, tumor like outgrowth in root of the plant and uh, in that ti plasmid suppose it is the tdna region by using our recombinant dna technology we cleave we cleave that t sorry suppose it is ti plasmid and this is the tdna region by using uh, t our recombinant dna technology we cleave this tdna and insert our desired dna into that portion so now when this uh, ti plasmid enter inside any plant it will act or it will express this desired dna will express itself inside the host body so in this way the vector for plant or eukaryotic cell will act then for this competent host so for transformation uh, the host should be competent to take up the dna this is done by treating them with specific construction uh, concentration of divalent cation such as calcium which increases the efficiency of uh, that host with which dna enter the bacterium through pore in its cell wall recombinant dna can then forced into such cell by incubating the cell with recombinant dna on ice followed by placing them a heat sock in a heat sock of 42 degree celsius and then putting them back to the ice this enables the bacteria to take up the recombinant dna so apart from this natural technique this is uh, not only way this natural technique are not only uh, are not only one way to transform this bacteria or uh, make the host cell competent there is another technique called micro injection using which recombinant dna is directly injected into nucleus of an animal cell another method which is suitable for plants are bombarded with high velocity micro particles of gold and tungsten coated with dna in a method called biolistic or gene gun and the last method uses disarmed pathogen vector which when allowed to infect cell transform recombinant dna into host then process of re recombinant dna technology at first the isolation of dna how to isolate dna in majority of organism this is dna which is the genetic part or genetic material in order to cut the dna with restriction enzyme we need to be it in a pure form free from other macromolecule since dna is enclosed within the membrane we have to break, break the cell open to release the dna along with some macromolecule such as rna protein polysaccharide and lipid this can be achieved by treating the bacterial cell with enzyme called lysozyme in in case of bacteria cellulase in case of plant cell chitinase in case of fungus so because cellulose is present in the plant cell wall and chitin is present in the fungal fungal cell wall you know that gene are located on long molecules of dna intertwined 
with proteins such as histones RNA can be removed by the treatment of ribonuclease whereas proteins can be removed by protease other molecule can be removed by appropriate treatments and purified DNA ultimately precipitates out after addition of chilled ethanol this can be seen as collection of fine thread in the suspension so after the isolation cutting of DNA at specific location so we can cut our desired DNA using the restriction enzyme then agarose gel electrophoresis is employed to check the progression of restriction enzyme digestion DNA is negatively charged hence it moved towards the positive electrode uh, this process is repeated with the vector DNA also joining of DNA involves several processes after having a cut that source DNA as well as vector DNA with specific enzyme the cut out gene, gene of interest from source DNA and the cut vector with space are mixed and ligase is added so the ligase will add or glue uh, it will help in the joining of the vector DNA and the desired DNA at these places at these places DNA ligase help to join these fragments then amplification amplification can be done using polymerase chain reaction this reaction or this uh, polymerase reaction machine can amplify the can uh, multiply the copies of gene of interest is synthesized in vitro using two sets of primer and the enzyme dna polymerase this polymerase chain reaction has uh, three steps one is denaturation where the heat is applied and two strands of dna separate from each other then annealing where the two RNA primers added then DNA polymerase or TAC polymerase which is a specific enzyme added to this polymerase reaction this is called as the TAC polymerase which was isolated from the bacterium thermos aquaticus what is the specificity of this polymerase it can act in a very high temperature so TAC polymerase is added and uh, this enzyme helps in the polymerization of uh, DNA and uh, hence in, in a single cycle uh, two copies of DNA formed. So in this way polymerase uh, chain reaction can amplify and produce million copies of DNA within a second. So this is the polymerase reaction which can be performed in vitro then insertion of recombinant DNA into host cell after the formation of multiple copies of that R DNA we can then insert that recombinant DNA into a suitable host then obtaining the foreign gene product when you insert the piece of DNA into cloning vector transfer it into the bacteria or plant or animal then the alien DNA get multiplied in almost all recombinant technology the ultimate aim is to produce a desirable protein that means to express the product of expression of that DNA hence there is a need for recombinant DNA to be expressed the foreign DNA or foreign gene gets expressed under appropriate conditions the expression of foreign genes in host cell involves understanding many technical details after having cloned the gene of interest and having optimized condition to induce the expression of target protein one has to consider producing in large scale if protein encoding gene is expressed in a heterologous host it is called recombinant protein the cell harboring cloned gene of interest may be grown on a small scale in the laboratory the cultures may be used for extracting desired protein and then purifying it by using different separation technique. The cell can also multiply in a continuous system wherein the used medium is drained out from one side while the fresh medium is added uh, from the other to maintain the cells in their physiologically most active stage or active phase. 
this type of culturing method produce larger biomass leading to higher yield of desired protein small volume cultures cannot yield appropriate quantity of products to produce large quantity development of bio reactors of culture can be processed and required thus bio reactors can be thought uh, as of as a vessel in which raw materials are converted biologically into a specific product individual enzyme etc using microbial plant animal human cells a bio reactor provides the optimal conditions for achieving the desired product by providing optimum growth conditions such as temperature ph substrate salt vitamins and oxygen so it is a vessel where it is the these are two types of bio reactors so basically it is a vessel with all the optimum temperature ph pressure and uh, aeration so we have to put all the raw material inside it then uh, leave it or uh, leave it for some times for the processing then after some times the process, uh, the product we can achieve the product so the two most commonly used bio reactors are stirring type which is shown in figure 9.7 A stirred tank reactor is usually cylindrical, with curved base to facilitate mixing of reactor content. Stirrer facilitates even the mixing and oxygen availability throughout the bio reactor. Alternatively, air can be bubbled through reactor. If you look the figure closely, you can see that bio reactor has agitator si system. Agitator system. Agitator system. Uh, can uh, agit if uh, agitator system an uh, oxygen delivery system and a foam control system a temperature control system a ph control system then sampling port so the small volume of culture can be withdrawn periodically so all these uh, parts are present in a bio reactor then downstream processing after completion of the biosynthetic stage the product has to be subjected through a series of processes before it is ready for marketing as finished product the processes include separation and purification which are collectively referred to as downstream processing the product has to be formulated with suitable preservatives such formulation has to undergo through clinical trials as in case of drugs strict strict quality control testing for each product is also required the downstream processing and quality control testing vary from product to product so it is all about your biotechnology principles and processes uh, how recombinant uh, recombinant dna technology uh, process occur and what is polymerase reaction all these things so um, i hope you really enjoyed this session uh, in my next video i will discuss another chapter of your ncert biology book uh, which will be helpful for your upcoming 12th class board exam so please stay tuned and like my videos share with other friends and subscribe to my channel sunanda's tutorial thank you